welcome to this, and hopefully my voice will not cut out, as this is my review of Ring of Honor Super Card of Honor 4, which uh, was tonight, or last night, I got, actually it ended tonight, it didn't end until after midnight, so, I don't know, not that it was a long show, but it started at 8, but it was a long show, um, due to, um, probably circumstances outside of, uh, Ring of Honor's control, but um, I will get into that in a minute. But first, we're gonna have story time because me to see a Ring of Honor event has been hell. Um, this has been, for those of you not aware, and there's probably five of you that will watch this video that are aware of this. Um, I have tried to go to Ring of Honor events since 2007. Um, after the night of Final Battle 2006. Um, I wanted to go to the uh, next New York show, which uh, was going to feature uh, Samoa Joe versus Morishima. Um, mainly, simply on the promo that Joe cut on Super Card of Honor, or Super Card of Honor, of uh, Final Battle 06, um, where he called out the Noah guys and all of that fun. But, um, so... I've tried to go to Ring of Honor shows over and over and over again, usually in New York, and weird, crazy crap happens. I have family emergencies. People have died. All sorts of crazy crap has happened. And this last week, crazy crap happened this last week to where, honestly, I was like, I'm not going to be able to go to these shows, and this is going to suck ass. Um, however... Everything worked out, and the world did not end once I got my ticket and showed up at the venue and walked through, so I got to see um, the show. So, that was good. Um, I did get to meet a lot of people today that seemed to recognize me and are subscribers and watch my videos, and I would like to thank all of them. Um, had a lot of fun uh, meeting everybody and um, all of that, and it was pretty cool. I uh, went to Booker T's uh, Legends of Wrestling, which was, I'll talk about this beforehand. It was a lot of fun. Met, met up with Bill and Doug, talked to them a little bit. Um, and a few other people who I will talk about on another video. Um, I will say this, there will probably be multiple videos tomorrow on my account. So, um, yeah, be sure to check them out. Um, if everything goes as planned, we will see. We will see. But anyways, um, went to that. It was a very good event. Um you might hear some bad things about it only because it was not the best organized event, but I think that had to do with the fact that they did not expect nearly as many people to show up as did. Um, but it was very good. I got to meet the people I wanted to meet, and they were very accommodating. Um, and uh, put it this way, Charmel was running the ticket booth and uh, pretty much bossing everybody around, doing a pretty good job. But uh, Booker T put on a very good show. Um, this was a lot of fun. And um, I got to meet a lot of people I've always wanted to meet, so that was very cool. And I uh, got to meet a lot of you, a lot of my subscribers too, which was kind of cool as well. And then we went to Super Card of Honor, which was a lot of fun, and um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I wouldn't call it one of the best shows I've ever been to, but close to it. Um, it was it was pretty freaking awesome. I, I will say that, just to be there live, to finally get to see a Ring of Honor event live was great. Um... And uh, had a lot of fun watching. Now, that, that was that was the important thing. You want to have fun watching the event. I had a lot of fun. Um, I hope that the DVD is as good as what I saw tonight. Um, that's always kind of you know, it's always kind of hard. But I'll kind of go over on what happened tonight, what I saw, what I thought of everything I saw, and all of that. <clears throat> um, so uh, the pre-show was uh, Alex Payne, um, Andy Ridge. Um, versus the Brown Ninja and Ernie Osiris. Um, no one knew who uh, Andy Ridge was, um, and so they just called him, a, I think, a Blue Pants, I think is what people were chanting at him, which was kind of cool. And uh, this was a good little, you know, fun match. Um, you know, kind of got everybody into it, and everybody had fun watching it. I think the guys had fun, so that was good. And then uh, we got a little bit of a surprise as we got uh, Don Juan and Andy Dalton taking on Grizzly Redwood and Push Whacker Luke, um, who, of course, signed autographs later um, during the intermission. Um, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. It wasn't on the main card, 
but um, it was fun. Uh, the crowd was into it, and um, that was just it was just one of those fun little things that happened. Um, wasn't the only one on the show, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, then the show actually started, and we got Eric Stevens um, taking on Rhett Titus, and uh, this was an okay little match. Uh, my one, and I've said this before, my one thing about how Adam Pierce books is I, I do wish he'd put on, try to put better openers, but it was what it was. It was okay, um, not too bad, and um, again was fine. Not too sure how this match will come across on DVD because uh, it was a lot of playing to the crowd, and I've noticed that when a lot of people don't seem to like it on a DVD when you have the guys playing to the crowd. They think it was boring. There were actually some people um, during one of the matches, and I will get to that, who who actually were kind of upset that you know guys were playing to the crowd, and I was like, they're playing to the crowd. Nothing wrong with that. Um, but anyways, next we had uh, Sweet and Sour Inc. of Chris Hero, Eddie Edwards, and Incognito taking on Jay Briscoe, Kevin Steen, and Magno. Um, this was a must-see for kind of a wrong reason. Um, I'm, I think it was Chris Hero through Mag... I think it's Magno. Um, yeah, Magno into... Uh, one of the turnbuckles and the rope broke. The top top turnbuckle broke, fell completely apart, and uh, but the guys didn't skip a beat. Um, actually, Chris Hero took the rope and and tried to kill Magno with it, and um, from there we it just kind of went from there actually. And uh, actually, it was a pretty good match. Um, it was interesting to see these guys work like that work without a top rope, and uh, but we still had dives, still had some high spots. Um, was a lot of fun and um, just just very very cool stuff. Particularly without the the image of the ring broke and them wrestling in the ring and actually putting on a pretty good match while all that was going on was 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 very cool and is kind of a must see match for that sort of thing. Uh, then we got Roger Strong versus um, Nakajima in an awesome match. Well, I don't know if it was awesome, but it was pretty freaking groovy live. Um, <clears throat> thoroughly enjoyed this match. Um, it was a great match live. Hopefully it's a great match on uh, DVD. And um, very much was, was just wow. To the point where people were like, you know, people pretty much knew what the best matches were going to be on this. And they were kind of like Howard Kenta and Davey Richards going to top this. So uh, that was kind of, ooh, how is this going to happen? After that... Um, we got Bobby Dempsey coming out in the special challenge match versus uh, some mystery opponent. The mystery opponent, which was probably the worst kept secret, um, if you actually follow Ring of Honor, um, as a lot of people guessed it ahead of time. <coughs> and Ring of Honor kind of played into that too. It was Kamala? So Kamala came out to a very large pop. Um, people were very much into that Kamala was there, and then uh, Bobby Dempsey was all was all scared of Kamala. They actually brought in kimchi as well. And um, so he... Uh, Larry Sweeney was not there, so they had uh, Shane Hagedorn basically doing Sweeney's role. And, and uh, so they get ready to wrestle. Um, you know, they're telling Kamala to kill Bobby Dempsey. So Bobby, Bobby Dempsey pulls off his shirt and He's got the body paint of Kamala, and he's big like Kamala. He's big and fat like Kamala. So he starts, you know, patting his stomach and doing this whole thing. So Kamala thinks he's like Kamala, so Kamala doesn't want to attack him. And um, this led to uh, Kim, to Shane Hagedorn attacking Kimchi, and Kimchi sicked Kamala on uh, Hagedorn, and then Bobby Dempsey attacked Hagedorn. Um, didn't go very long, probably went a minute, maybe maybe two minutes. But it was a lot of fun, it was very funny, and um, I like stuff like that, so I can live with that. That was pretty groovy. Next, we had the Four Corner Survival Match. Um, Claudio Castanoli versus El Generico, Blue Demon Jr., and Brent Albright. Um, this was an okay match, um, probably better than I thought it was going to be. Uh, Blue Demon Jr. wasn't in there very long. I would have actually liked to have seen, because they had El Generico and Blue Demon Blue Demon Jr. in the ring for a while. They worked pretty good together, and I would have liked to have seen more of them in the ring. But basically, the story of the match was Brent Albright trying to kill Castanoli, and um, so we got that. That was that was okay. 
Um, then we have Brian Danielson versus Alex Kozlov. Uh, a lot of people probably will not like this match because it was a lot of playing to the crowd. It was a lot of them, um, you know, talking to the crowd, taunting the crowd a little bit, um, doing chance type thing, them playing to the crowd. Um, but it worked a lot. It worked very well live. I don't know how well it will come off on DVD, but it was a very good. It was it was a good match live. Um, I'm not too sure how well it will come across on DVD, but it was it was fun. Then we went to intermission. We came back from intermission. We got D'Lo Brown versus Colt Cabana. Probably the worst match of the night. Um, this was a lot like the Brian Danielson uh, Alice Kozlov match in which they were trying to you know play to the crowd a little bit. It just did not work as well. I was expecting a comedy match from these guys. Didn't get it. I think that's probably might have been why I didn't. But it just wasn't a very good match. And um, that was probably the that was definitely the worst match on the card. So there you go. Then we got Kenta versus Davy Richards. Holy fucking shit! This this may have been. I'll have to think about it a couple of days. Um, and then by then maybe it won't be. But um, the best match I've ever seen live. Um, <clears throat> this was fucking amazing. Just just holy shit! Um, they literally tried to kill each other, and uh, there was just literally. It looked like, and I'm uh, hopefully most people have probably already read the spoilers. So, but um. It looked like there was going to be a countout, and the fans, I think, would have been fine with a countout um, after what would have caused the countout. It was fucking insane. They literally tried to kill each other. I just, wow, it was just fucking amazing. And then uh, Jimmy Jacobs and Austin Aries uh, versus Tyler Black and Necro had to go after it, and the crowd was pretty much dead because, uh, yeah, it was... Richards and Kenta just tore the place down. It may it may wind up being match of the weekend, which um literally to the point of people were chanting "fuck WrestleMania, fuck WrestleMania." I mean, it was insane how insane that match was. <coughs> then we got uh, as I said, Jimmy Jacobs, Austin Aries versus Tyler Black and Necro Butcher had to go on after this. Um, this was good. Um, it was kind of hard to judge because the crowd was kind of, you know, I myself was kind of worn out and uh, was a little dead. But um, it seemed like it was pretty good. We'll have to see it on DVD. Eh, may have just been okay. But um, either way, it was just kind of there after that match. That, that, that was impossible to uh, to um, follow to the point of I actually had to make a phone call. So I got up after the Kenta Davy Richards match and walked to the back making a phone call. And who would be there but uh, Mr. Steve DeMarco. And uh, finally got to meet Steve DeMarco. And me and him were talking and he was saying, he was basically said after seeing Kent and Davey Richards that, you know, he could never have a match like that. So he should just give up now. Um, you know, not that I'd, I would ever expect him to, you know, have a stiff match like that. Um, not in a bad, I don't mean that in a bad way, I, I just mean, um, seeing him wrestle, that's just not the style that he wrestles, and, uh, but Kent and Dave Richards just tried to kill each other, it was nuts, but then, to carry on, we got the main event, which was Jerry Lynn taking on Nigel McGinnis, most of you probably know, Jerry Lynn won, um, this was a very good to great match, um, the crowd was still kind of dead a little bit, but by the end of the match, uh, it was... The crowd was definitely into it. Um, just from a live perspective, I think this was <coughs> Jerry Lynn's best match in Ring of Honor um, that I have seen, at least. Um, I, I think I've seen the ones that most people have considered his best matches in Ring of Honor. And uh, it was pretty good, and um, pretty good to great, I would say, um, sort of thing. It was a lot of fun, and uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Ring of Honor put on a great show, in my opinion. Um, like I said, they put, they gave me maybe one of the best matches I have ever seen live, and that's saying something in my opinion. Fucking great show. Um, looking forward to the pay-per-view tomorrow, um, and all that will entitle after that, but, uh, anyways, like I said, there will be multiple videos this weekend, so, um, and probably multiple videos tomorrow, so definitely check out the page, or, um, just, you know randomly check if, if you're interested, but um, there will probably be some surprises tomorrow, I will say that, but anyway, um, my voice is scratchy, and I can barely talk, even though it probably doesn't sound that way, 
But, um, with that, I'm out. Have a great fucking time, and, um, later.